Hello, today I would like to show you how you can do well on your multiple choice questions while listening. Well, it's not really tricky as long as you know the vocabulary and the grammar and you know the, the meanings of the words clearly. So th we have here Rocky Bay field trip. So the first one is like we will we we'll provide with the 30 seconds to think about it. But it may take a longer time for me to show you as an example. So I may pause the videos every time and I'll try to show you how it's going to be uh, how it's gonna be done in the in the questions in the answers. So first of all, that we have here, what do students agree should be included in, a, in their aim? So what do, do the students agree? Okay, so first of all, they should be agree on it, right? And should be included in their aims. Included in their aims. Okay, factors affecting where or or organisms live, the need to preserve endangered species, techniques for classifying different organisms. And we have to come up with an answer. I brought my notes on our biology field trip to Rocky Bay, Colin, so we can work on our report on the research we did together. Okay, I've got mine too. Let's look at the aims of the trip first. All right. Right, what did you have? I just put something about getting experience of the different sorts of procedures used on a field trip. But we need something about what causes different organisms to choose particular habitats. I agree. And something about finding out how to protect organ. Alright, as you can see, they talked about the stuff they need to preserve endangered species and uh, all the stuff. But uh, they talk, uh, the guy said, we need, we need to talk about the factors affecting where the organism lives. And she said she agrees. So from this point, we can say that... The, uh, she agrees, so this is our key point where we, she said, all right, so the answer is going to be A here because of factors, living organisms. Okay, I want to mark this one all because that's what the guy said, but in a paraphrased way that, like, he used some different vocabulary in, in other words. So... Since in danger of dying out. In our rains. Mm. But we weren't really looking at that. I suppose not. Okay, now there's the list of equipment we all had to bring on the field trip. What did they tell us to bring a ruler for? Alright, what equipment did they forget to take on a field trip? So the, we should find the equipment that they forgot, alright? Equipment? Forgotten equipment, alright. So... It was something about measuring the slope of the shore. But of course we didn't need it because we were measuring wind direction. And we brought the compass for that. But not the piece of string to hold up in the air. <laughs> Didn't Mr. Blake make a fuss about us leaving that behind? Yeah, he does go on. Anyway, it was easy to get one from another of the students. Now, the next section's the procedure. I sent you the draft of that. So... Um, they forgot to bring a string here. They said they didn't need to measure or they brought the compass. But they forgot to bring a string, but they too could get it from the local person or friend. I think that, that's friend. So it's going to be like this one. The answer is going to be A. And uh, well, they forgot it. A string. All right. Number three. So in the number three, we have to find a Hel Hel In Helen's procedure section, Colin suggests a change. Suggests a change. Okay, we have to find a change. And in Holland's procedure. All right. Okay, we have to find that. It was clear, but I don't think we need all these details of what time we left and what time we got back and how we divided up the different research tasks. Mm, okay, I'll look at that again. All right, here he, inform, uh, he gave some information and he gave some help related to the amount of information provided because he said don't put a lot of too much information, just instead you just need all details. If you need all details, put it into... Uh, aspects of your procedure, but not this one and this one. So the answer is going to be C in this case. Because it's really simple in this way to do. Some more information to do here. Alright, so we came to the fourth one where we have to find what do they say about the method they use to measure wave speed. To measure wave speed and the method. Okay, it can be provide accurate results. All right, it was simple to carry out. Okay, it was required special equipment. Okay, equipment, carry out, accurate results. All right. Then we have to describe our method of investigation in detail. Mm. So let's begin with how we measured wave speed. I was surprised how straightforward that was. I'd expected us to have some sort of high-tech device, 
not just stand there and count the number of waves per minute. <laughs> not very precise, but I suppose it was good enough. Well, she said she expected to use some special equipment, and uh, the guy said that, that they were all surprised how easy and straightforward it was, so the answer is going to be exactly B, because it was easy to carry out. The research was clearly simple. All right. But the way we measured the amount of salt was interesting. In the water from the rock pools? Yeah. Oh. All right. The, now we have to find this fifth one. Where what makes uh, Helen make when the first drawing map? Okay. Uh, what mistake? Or have to, we have to find a mistake while they're drawing the map? Okay. All right. We have to find what Helen did actually. I wanted to check the chemicals we used in the lab when we analyzed those samples. Uh, was it potassium chromate and silver nitrate? That's right. Okay. And we need the map of the seashore. You just left that to me. And I had to do it while the tide was low. Well, that was okay, but the place I started it from was down on the beach. Then I realized I should have gone up higher to get better visibility. So I had to start all over again. But at least I got the squared paper, or I'd have had problems. All right, she said that the, she got the wrong place where it was not clearly visible, so the answer is going to be clearly be here, because in this case it must be be here. So it's not about the time, it's not about the scale, but it's about all about the time, it's about, about all about place, I think so. So now we have to move to the sixth question where I have to find the answer. So here we have to find what did they decide to next to do in with their map, okay, decision and what they decided. We have to find this one now. I'll play the audio. It's drawing it all to scale. Yeah, it looks good. We could get a map of the region off the internet and see if we need to make any changes. Hmm, I had a look, but I couldn't find anything. But you took some pictures, didn't you? Yeah, I'll email you them if you want. Okay, I'll make my amendments using those. Then I can scan it into our report. Great. All right, they talk about the pictures and using about these pictures on this project for the next part. And uh, instead of pictures, we have here the word, word photographs. So I'm, photograph, so I'm going to scale this one. I'm going to mark this one B, so the answer is going to be clearly B in this case. Well, I would say it's not really tricky. It's all about focusing and what they're talking about. When they talk, when they talk about something wrong or nothing, that they don't mention anything about the other stuff. You can just cross them out so that don't, you don't get confuse it and even if you don't find answers I highly recommend you to just circle at least one number and uh, write in your uh, answer sheet because you know this provides a 30% chance you know 30% chance you have a 30% chance and 30% chance all right so I won't I want to explain it in the easiest way because if you find the one wrong answer the answer to your chance is going to be 50% and let's say you don't know the answer correct answer but just uh, you are about to mark, uh, you know, but uh, a, a, for example, C is incorrect, so just mark A or B because you may get at least 50% chance to get higher, higher grade. So it, I guess it's helpful because don't leave the answers without uh, any mark, without any marking because you may lose, you may lose a grade no matter what you do if you don't mark it. So that's why it's better to just mark any number if you, if any mark any letter if you don't know the correct answer. And I was, I hope it was helpful because you can see that it's not really tricky just to find a keywords, mark them and pay attention what they're talking about. And when you get the wrong answer, just cross them out is easily. They don't give you grade because you write peripherally. They give you grade because you find the correct answers. And thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.